telling me, at least for the last three or four years, about that program out at Penn called m and <laughs> and why can't we do something which is just as wonderful, and I think today it's a tribute to his vision that uh, uh, we are here today. So, Michael has thought a lot about the value proposition of MET and its unique position in the marketplace. You'll hear from Amy Jarek, Assistant Vice Chancellor and Director of Undergraduate Admissions. We're simply thrilled that she's able to join us during the busiest time of the year. I have to say that Melissa somehow persuaded her that San Francisco was on the way from Los Angeles to Guadalajara. <laughs> <laughs> she was in Los Angeles today and in Guadalajara at daybreak tomorrow. So we're really pleased that you found a way to go through San Francisco there. So. <clears throat> She meets her, her she, what she likes best. She's been our closest partner in launching the MEP program, and has been our, really an eloquent ambassador for the program, making sure that students, families, and high school counselors know about this exceptional new offering. We couldn't have launched MET without her. Amy joined Berkeley in 2012 and now leads a team of more than 50 applications, admissions professionals who each year look at approximately 100,000 applications to Berkeley. Amy herself is a first-generation college student and a passionate advocate for higher education. She considers meeting with prospective students and their families one of the most, if not the most, rewarding aspect of her work. So, Michael, please, let me welcome you to the stage. external advocates, uh, a bit of a grind, uh, meeting with college counselors, but I'm not going to Guadalajara, so I'm just going, just going down the street. And I get into the registrar's office and check in. I'm early, got my laptop, Michael Grimes from Morgan Stanley. She looks like she's calling security. <laughs> Are you a college counselor? And I, re I hadn't realized until after that meeting, the answer to that is yes on all these meetings. <laughs> Yes, I am. Oh, <laughs> terrific. Oh, you're right over here. Uh, you know, Cal MET program. I walk in by this point, I'm not expecting all 60 uh, of these fine young women at Castilea. Uh, there are three, which is a good day, because this is a rifle shot program. This is not a buckshot program. And I meet some pretty inspirational women. I meet Rashi. Rashi is head of the robotics club. Rashi is super focused on STEM. But she already knows she wants more. She wants to found her own company, and she's already thinking that, is this going to be a company that I can really lead and run just from knowing what I'm going to learn in mechanical engineering? And then, next to speak, is Drew. And Drew's focused on undergrad business and hoping to be able to get a computer science minor wherever she goes. And that's all she's been thinking about because she's actually worried that even getting the minor will be impossible because she won't be able to get the classes. That the classes will be filled with computer science students, they'll be impacted, and there'll be no real time to get a computer science minor in addition to her business degree, and she's extremely excited about this. And then third is Katie. And Katie is mobile app developer, Java expert, extraordinarily articulate, and Katie Interrupts pretty early on because I said, go ahead and interrupt me. There's only three of us in a room like this. <laughs> kind of easy presentation. And she says really early on, are you looking for rounded candidates or pointy candidates? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yes. <laughs> so that's why we're here is the traditional paths. If you're among these fields, obviously there's a lot of things that our great young graduates of high school can study, study tech or study business among the many other things, but they tended to be siloed, as our tie-wearing and non-tie-wearing <laughs> leaders uh, can attest. And to some degree, in tailgating later in a career, just out of undergraduate, the tech graduates, like a lot of us, we didn't have any leadership or management skills that we learned at the undergraduate level because of the focus we had. And then maybe the same true over here, incredible organizational behavior leadership and management, but 
not really taken more than an intro to computer science class or a math and a physics class and maybe a design class if, if you could. And so the careers that are amazing that come from each side, the kind of the, we'll call it the blue side for now, are thousandfold on the tech side. This is the greatest tech job market kind of the world has ever known. And those are terrific careers. And without further on the fly or academic learning of business, like so many people in this room have done and know well, amazing careers, head of engineering, VP of development, chief technology officer. On the other, let's call it the yellow side of the ledger, the kind of undergraduate business entry level positions, sales, human resources, strategy. Unless, how do we blend them into the green? Most people doing that on the fly. I was talking with Tom Riley, CEO of Cloudera, formerly of ArcSight and HP, you know, started really on the tech side and working at IBM and had to, on the fly, through a sales program 10 years later, learn the EQ, I think, as he was describing it. And that's the kind of dynamic coming from the other side. Uh, John Rigatello, who I think is going to be here, um, always talks about his time at Haas, I think, where he knew Rich really well. And then at Electronic Arts and later Unity, he's developing tech on the fly. So kind of getting to the green, the product managers, the head of the divisions, the COOs, the CEOs, those, those jobs work and, and lead to the CEO jobs just like they can from the blue or the yellow. But how do the students develop that? Typically on the fly or academically through the MBA, which used to be kind of four plus two before there became a requirement to have Work experience, as you all know, if you have children looking at this, and then the work experience is expanded to three. So this can be done, and it's a great path, and it's nine years. And the two largest market cap companies in the world have CEOs who did this. Tim Cook with his undergrad engineering degree and his MBA, Sundar Pichai, same thing, actually with a master's in tech in addition to his IT tech degree and his work MBA. So the question for students now, they don't have to be in a hurry, but what does happen in nine years, you all know well, Technology changes. Nine years ago, the Nokia 1208, the best-selling phone, no apps existed, sold 100 million worldwide, which is actually a pretty big share of uh, phones at the time. The iPhone was released that year. So the solution, you've heard about it from Rich and Shankar, MET, we'll talk about it. It is almost unique, but it's based on another program we talked about at Penn, so there's two of these. The solution here in Silicon Valley is MET. And what we're really excited about being here, and these are a sampling of the companies that we will invite to recruit students, to mentor students, to offer internships. That's something that'll be, we'd like to engage with all of you on. And two ideas have already come up inbound to the deans. One of the companies on this page who had heard about the program said, you know, could we be able to have a two year internship where the first year, She's in development, and the second year, she's in strategy, business leadership. I hope your answer was yes. <laughs> yes. And, and, and another one said, came up with a concept of, you know, quarterly, an hour Skype call, or that type of thing, to be able to mentor a student on what it means to kind of be dual discipline, maybe with a product manager mentoring someone. These are just two ideas that came inbound. We haven't gotten started on any of this. So we'd like to get involved, whether you guys directly or your HR folks. The recruiting opportunities here are going to be a win-win. I can speak to having hired seven or eight of the graduates over the last decade of the dual degree program at Penn. It's just extraordinary how pointing it around uh, they, they come out of that program, and we expect the same thing here. Not only in tech, but also as we think about transportation, autos, Pharmaceuticals, healthcare, finance, credit cards, banking. What industry isn't being re media, telecom? What industry is not being reinvented by tech? If we look forward 20 or 30 years, how many CEOs are going to need both the business training they already need to run any of the companies on the right, but also true digital? Uh, we talked about this being one of only two options in the world, and that's really important. There's a lot of terrific undergraduate engineering schools. There's seven here. There's 20 more, 30 more, and quite a few uh, undergraduate business schools to choose from. The two options that exist as of August 1st are MET and the Penn program at MIT. Uh, we want to give one more 
focal point on the Penn program and you know, a tribute to Dr. Bill Hamilton. 35 years ago, Bill Hamilton created this vision. So no vision on my part, about as much vision as any dupe and revise or dupe and maybe don't revise. This is in tribute to the Penn program. We're trying to do the exact same thing and have it here in Silicon Valley. Two awesome choices. If you have high school students who are thinking about this, they should be thinking about the Penn program without question. It's just extraordinary. And we're hoping to stand on the shoulders of giants like Dr. Hamilton as we create this. I think Shankar mentioned the founding class will be entering next fall, applying now for, uh, as Amy will tell you, I guess November 30 uh, deadline. And that's what we're really seeking is those who want to be part of the founding class. You'll hear from Amy on how they can apply to that and other ways to be involved. All of you unwittingly by being here have become ambassadors. <laughs> it's informal designation. You're now going to spread the word. So thank you, newly minted ambassadors. In addition, if you'd like to get involved in mentoring and recruiting interns, as I hope you will, that's going to be terrific. And then third and really important, Shankar mentioned we raised close to $15 million. We need to get to 20 to make this the greatest program in the world. Uh, this part I'm not really good at. I've never asked for money for anything in my life. Anytime anybody who I've done stuff for has said, you know, aren't you ever going to do a March of Dimes or ask me for money? I've always said, um, one day. Today's the day. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there are multiple seats left on this rocket ship to be a founding board member. If you're interested, please talk to us. The amazing contributions you can make, not only financially, and that's over a multi-year period, it's tax deductible. Uh, is really, really terrific. Founding partner at a different level, founding contributor. It's going to be a, a wall that this is going to be up there for the next 50 years. And it's going to be really special, I think, to be part of this. And anything that you have, anything that you have, you can donate $1,000, $100, anything that you want to contribute to, please get one of the deans or any of the development folks or me and hand us a card so we can talk more about even deeper engagement because we want to make this the best program in the world. Uh, this note really does matter. Philanthropy does not impact admissions decisions whatsoever, despite the fact that I am handing this over to someone in admissions. <laughs> and it's not that way, and there's a Chinese wall, and it's real. <laughs> that, thank you, and I'll turn it over to you.